Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create, and we are working on Mona, Mi Mona Moore, and um, we're gonna work on the inside. So I've done the back cover, so I'll show that to you really, the inside back liner, real quick, and we are gonna duplicate that over here. So let's start by laying in this piece. Let me see if it's, I'm gonna dry fit it first. And it looks good. <clears throat> Pardon me. We've got a couple of um, Santa Ana days, and now we've got a little overcast with a weather warning. So our weather's kind of all over the map right now. I hope everybody's doing well and getting ready for Valentine's Day. Yeah, so this will be done in time for Valentine's Day. At least mine will. <laughs> and as a reminder, um, my finished albums are now for sale in the shop. So if you go to, I think it's called Daphne's Designs, it's on the home menu. Um, you can see which albums are available right now. Uh, it'll probably be a week or two before this one's in uh, the shop. And then um, I'm getting ready to add Cozy Moments and what was it? Oh, London's Calling. Those will be out soon. So I like to keep them for a couple of, couple of weeks to make sure I don't have any issues with the cut list. Um, cause I, it's, I'm, can more quickly, um, access the book and come up with the right cut list than trying to watch through the videos. So I keep them for a little while. You guys usually catch if I have an issue that you usually notice, notice it pretty quickly. So, okay, this strip right here is one and three quarter inch. It just happened to be a scrap I had. I didn't have enough to cover the whole page. And it's so large, I like color blocking anyway. So I, even if I had enough to cover the whole page, I, I likely would have color blocked just to break it up. <clears throat> okay, now we're gonna trim this one to fit. I think I got the height right. It looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Okay, it just needs to be trimmed down a little bit. we do. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Just need to ink it and we'll lay it down. So again, you're just going to repeat that process. This is one and three quarters and this panel is six inches across. And then this is just trimmed to fit what's, what's, um, what remains exposed. <clears throat> and it turns out it's three inches. So six, three, one and three quarters. But your measurements may vary depending on, you know, um, your album. So it's always best to to fit it and check. <clears throat> See, it looks nice, and I can totally picture. Um, you know, a nice large photo here, even some room for journaling or a couple of smaller photos. Okay, so that's the inside. Okay, now we're gonna get started. Oops, sorry about that. Hopefully that wasn't too bothersome. We're gonna get started on uh, the outside. <clears throat> so I set aside these papers. So go ahead and trim and line um, a horizontal ephemera card. I chose this one. Cut apart and 
uh, matte these two ephemera cards. Both, uh, all three of the ephemera cards, all four are coming from the 12 by 12 pack. <clears throat> I'm going to use this, which comes from the 12 by 12, as the spine. I'm going to check and see if I've got it cut right. It looks like it is. So that's going to be our spine. It's going to wrap around toward the front. <clears throat> so I'm going to start by taking off the center strips. And we'll get it aligned, and then we'll come back and take off some more of the strips. It just makes it a little bit easier to handle. Now, as we're putting this down the center, it's okay um, to have it completely open, but as we start to come around the score area, you're going to want to hold each, the front and back, as you're going along and attaching it at a 40, about a 45 degree angle, sorry. It's so big it keeps bumping into stuff. not laying flat because of the hinges. There we go. Oops, I pushed that down too hard. Okay. I know you're getting a lot of my head, but it's kind of hard not to do. At first, yeah. That looks pretty darn good. Okay, so we've got that in. I'm gonna go ahead and peel back. Okay, this particular piece is now gonna start to come around. So again, I'm gonna hold it at about 45 degree angle as I apply pressure to the adhesive. And that way, when it's fully opened, it won't buckle, and when it's fully closed, it won't tear. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and remove another one. I think I'll go ahead and remove the rest of the backing and finish wrapping. <clears throat> Again, I'm holding it at roughly a 45 degree angle. <clears throat> okay, now we'll get started on the other side. Now I've got these two to finish. I'm gonna put the, I think I'm gonna put this print on the back, but I'm not, actually not sure, but I am gonna use these ephemera cards to decorate. And I think it's gonna look like that. So this is, needs to be trimmed down. Let me do that real quick so we can get a better visual. So it needs to be trimmed to about right there. 
<clears throat> so this uh, is roughly nine inches. I've got to trim it to fit once I decide if it's going to be front or back, but I don't want to trim it down any further just in case this is not exactly the same on the front and back. I got a little bit of room to play with. And then I have this piece also to use as a background. <clears throat> so I'm going to fuss around with these a little bit and try to figure out what I want. another option. If I do this one, I definitely don't want to use this. It's too much. I kind of like the horizontal. This is definitely directional because of the butterflies, so it needs to be a vertical. And this is just an element that I fussy cut. So the question is, do we like the um, the writing? That's one option. And then the other option, turn this down a little bit more, is this background. I like them both, but I think I do like this a little bit better. Now I am, this is roughly the layout. I'm gonna add some additional embellishments, but I'm ready now to go ahead and lay down this piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure it, trim it, and we'll get this glued down. Then we'll flip it over and use this for the back cover. Okay, I'm going to trim and check a couple of times before I'm ready to lay it down. Hmm, I cut it in an angle. This wasn't quite straight, so I had to cut it a slight angle. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
We'll see, but I think this is it. Yeah, okay, I'm ready to get my down. <clears throat> so when, if this doesn't go in straight, then you wind up with your second piece coming like this. So it's important to lay it down square with this edge and then push it back and then mark top and bottom because you're not cutting a right angle, um, but it will appear right when you lay it in because we have an even border and the border will fool your eyes into believing it's a right angle. <clears throat> it's pretty easy to do that with pattern papers. Um, when you have a solid, it's, it's a lot harder to fool your eyes. But we have this very busy um, print here so um, it's hard for your eyes to spot a right angle anyway. But if it was just red and black, you would be able to pick it out. <clears throat> just something to keep in mind when you're thinking about wrapping a spine, pattern matters. See, that looks pretty much like a right angle, doesn't it? It's not, but it looks like it, and that's all we're striving for. It's difficult um, when you're covering something this big to, to have it be really, truly a right angle on front and back. It's just the nature of paper. Okay, so that's our front. Now we'll do our back. This needs to be trimmed down like an eighth of an inch. <clears throat> now, because we know it wasn't a right angle on the other side, we know that's going to be the case for this side. I'm just double checking I've got this is up. This is definitely directional, so you don't want to mess that up. Oh, look at that, I cut it too short. That's interesting. So when I trimmed this, and I'm gonna piece it together to make it work, I trimmed it at nine inches, which is what the front was, but as you can see, it's about a quarter inch smaller. So I actually think I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna go ahead and lay this in, and then I'm gonna take a decorative strip, maybe the hearts, or maybe this one. I'd like to do something that's not black, but I may not have an option. Um, and maybe lay in a decorative strip between the two. Uh, I gotta think about that a little bit. I haven't inked it, so I can take my paper together if I want to, which I think I will. <clears throat> so I've talked about doing this before. So when you cut something too small, if you haven't inked the edges, you can definitely marry them back up. It doesn't look like it goes on this side, so it's got to be on this side. Mm -hmm. Yep, and you can't, you can't even see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape that together with scotch tape. So I'm going to flip it over and tape it together, and that'll extend it. <clears throat> Providing I can find my scotch tape. I used it once today. What did I do? Oh, here it is. Mm. No, nope, here it is. And this is an easy pattern to match up. So you're just matching the pattern.
Oh, that's off a little. but us because we know it's there. We're settled out. Now I'm going to trim it to fit. Okay, we'll add some ink and glue this down. There is the back cover. Okay, now we'll start thinking about what to do here. <clears throat> I kind of like that too. <clears throat> I'm gonna put my iWatch I box under here, which turns out to be the absolute perfect size. I'm gonna look at my charms. Kinda like that. Mm. I think I've got two small ones too. I think I might, yeah, put one here and one on the corner for him. I've got a butterfly, a rose, a woman's comb. Oh, you know what, this is not for this collection. I think that's for a mo uh, maybe it is. 
I like the butterfly, but he kind of disappears in this background, so I think that's kind of a waste. I think I have another bag of charms. I think this one actually goes with my next project. Okay, so I'm not gonna use the fan. It actually goes here, here they are. They're already in this box. Oops. Okay, so we've got lots of bits to work with. <clears throat> so if you get the DCE, depending on you know how much is in your purchase, you're definitely gonna get charms. Um, the charms will vary depending on how much you spend. We have this cute man's tie, which I am going to put right there at, on his tie. I really like that. The rose, no. This is pretty cute too. This little, what do you call them? Cupid. I like that. Oh, I know. I had taken this charm and I took the, um, the little hole off. It's most of this is made out of lead, so it's pretty easy to um, break off. I think I kind of wanted to put it as an adornment in her hair, is what I had originally thought of. <clears throat> I'm not crazy about that, but I definitely like the tie on him, so we're going to glue that down. <clears throat> That's fun. Okay. Ow. Okay, I'm just going through all my chipboard pieces, trying to figure out what I want to do. Because I definitely want to add some dimension here. These are little cut aparts. run something through that. Put a bow on it. I thought I had a nice ivory wax thread, but I don't see it. Um, it's not in my, typically where I place it. So I'm not caring for that, that's too crowded. I do like this, so I'm gonna glue these two together because I know I want that to slightly overlap.
I'm just holding it against the edge to see if it looks straight. It's gonna come over more like that. And then I have graphic 45 roses that I wanna use. And I think I wanna use red. perspective I think that looks better I do like this but I'll use it somewhere else um, I fussy cut the word cherished I've went through and fussy cut several things so I yeah I'm liking this much better so I'm gonna do probably some small flowers right here and then a little bit of a spray here and then that may change where I want to place these yeah so I'll definitely want to come over like this And then I have this fussy cut flower I forgot about, which we can elevate here. here to lift it a little so we can get some sense of the dimension. I'm almost done. I'll probably do a little more fussing around, but I think that's gonna be it. So those flowers go here, these flowers go here. I need to ink this and put some chipboard behind it. This will go directly on to the cover and these are gonna be slightly elevated.
drops, right? I dropped something. What did I drop? <clears throat> Here it is. <clears throat> okay, let's get some chipboard on the back of these. So these are what I would call uh, my anchor pieces. And then once you get that done, then you can start fussing around with the details. this and we'll figure out where we're going to put this. This is fussy cut from the 12 by 12, if that wasn't clear. It's not chipboard. But I do want it elevated, so let's get some more chipboard. foam stickers instead. My hands just aren't working for me. I, I generally prefer chipboard. It's stiffer. Um, the less movement, the, you know, the better. Um, moves around a lot. There's a chance it could snag on something. But my hands are just not having it today. So I'm going to do my cheat.
think this is a little taller than one layer of chipboard, but I'm not positive. But that's okay. And I use um, art glitter glue on everything, just FYI. Um, even the, the metal pieces. Okay, I think I'm gonna cluster this here closer to the edge. Um, and then I'm going to find some kind of a ribbon. I don't have anything offhand, but I'm going to find something to put right under this cluster. So it'll be kind of tucked under. Okay, and then this is gonna go right there. Once it's mostly down, I like to come back and then maybe glue a couple of the petals down just to make sure it's secure. Okay. I'm just pressing down on this to make it a little bit flatter. Okay. I think I'm going to use that and then a couple of small roses that come down a little. Okay, where's my, here it is. I need a wire cutter. There we go. <clears throat>
Okay. Okay, I think I'm going to use one more of these tiny buds. What do you guys think? Let's clear some of this visual space so we can take a look at it without all the noise. Okay. 
Okay, I think that's it. That little Cupid is so cute. But I don't know what to do with him, he's so tiny. What do you guys think? I think we're just about done. So I am going to try to find a little bit of ribbon to tuck here and there, but that's pretty much the cover, and that was uh, beginning to end process that you guys ask for often. So hopefully you enjoyed that and um, picked up some ideas for yourself. I still have a couple of tags and stuff. I mean, if you feel like there's too much open space, although I, I think it's it's pretty much done. You know, we've got lots, lots of goodies um, that can be added, um, like this always and forever. It says it twice, actually. So there's a small, always, you know what? I'm gonna cut it off and let's take a look at it. So this is another little item that's really fun to kind of tuck in with your flowers like so. But we have chipboard. So we'll use some of this chipboard on the back. I still have a couple of roses left. There's the roses that are left. So each one of these could be larger. I try not to get too big because when you open the book, this is gonna keep it from lying flat. So I don't wanna go crazy with dimension on the cover or you won't be able to get your book to open up. Um, or go crazy, but make sure it's a box lid and not, not an album. Nope, I think we're done. I think we could do something like that, but I already used this, which I liked. Okay, got this little cherished. It can actually get tucked in right here by Love Notes. I like that because there was too much green. Hopefully you guys saw that too. I'm gonna to put a little ink on this and tuck it under. When I do a tuck, I usually put glue on top and bottom. And that covers up more of that green. I think that even looks better. Okay, and I kind of wrinkled it a little just to give it a little texture and dimension uh, without a lot of weight. I usually push until I feel it's grabbing on something. Okay. All right, I'm gonna pick up the rest of my bits and I think that's, we'll call it a day. Oops, let me bring that back into frame. I'm so sorry I was out of frame. So I just added this cherished, there's the love notes, and then I added this little tag here. And there's room to add um, some more strips if you like. Um, you know, it's full of uh, strips in the collection, little words and sayings. So thanks everybody for tuning in.